Hey, hey, in this video, I'm going to outline the roadway to software development. I'm going to give you each section step by step. So sit down, take some notes. This is going to be very informative for you. So what is the roadway to software development? It is uh, describing the process that you're likely to experience when landing your first job as an entry level developer. And then I'm gonna talk about how to advance in your career and what you need to do to eventually get yourself to senior developer if that's your goal or beyond. So first thing you have to understand is that you don't wanna get caught in tutorial hell uh, when you're learning how to code. Meaning there's so much out there, the trap that people get caught up in is that they try to learn this, and then they got to go to this, they got to go to this, and they got to go to this, and they got to go to this, and they get frustrated because you're getting all these different opinions about what you should learn to get a job when in fact, most of the things you hear about in terms of what you're supposed to get, uh, what you're supposed to learn to get that first job is false. If you've been watching my channel, you know that the key to all this is the fundamentals. You got to learn the fundamentals of code. If you don't know what that is, Go to unclesteph.com, look at the curriculum in my mentoring program bootcamp, and you see what the fundamentals are. Now, I teach the web stack, but once you learn the web stack, even the LAMP stack, then you will have enough skill to be able to pivot to any other stack or specialization that you want. Let me give you a specific example. Let's say, for ex let's say you see that there are a lot of React jobs out there. So should you jump in and learn React? No. First thing you gotta learn is the web stack. You have to learn HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. You have to understand how the request response model works, what web apps do, how they're, how they're made up, et cetera, et cetera. Once you've done that, learning React will be like a very short thing. Take you a few days and you can start getting going with React, if not in one day. I'm not saying you're gonna be an expert within a day, but all that React does, it provides a nice layer on top of all the other things I talked about, the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, etc. And it just makes it easier. But you can't really use React effectively unless you know those fundamentals. That's just one example of the fundamentals. So once you know your fundamentals, once you're comfortable writing basic code, basic apps, then you start looking to do some real work. Now, what I have people do in my mentoring program, first they build their portfolio website, then I have them go out, do two to three little freelance jobs for free. This is important. You do it for free for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's no pressure on you. And number two, it's easy to get the gig, easy to get the job when you're when the, uh, the company or the nonprofit you're going to do the work for, they're not paying. So there's no risk for everybody, for anybody. And at the same time, you get that super important experience that you need to build up your portfolio and to show prospective employers or freelance clients, if you want to go that route, that you actually can deliver, you can produce things. Keep in mind that one or two freelance projects that you build for a real company, even simple websites, install their WordPress, set up their Stripe with uh, payments, whatever, that's worth months of tutorials. Very important to get your foot in the door. That's the strategy to get your foot in the door. Once you have that, then you're in a position where the probability of you landing that first job increases quite a bit. So what's the next step once you've done what I've just described? Build your fundamental skills, build up your portfolio website, do two or three small projects. You, all, you gotta start networking after that. You have to go out there and start reaching out to other coders, join a Discord servers with uh, developers doing the same type, same type of work as you, uh, get your LinkedIn profile up to date. Uh, one thing you can do, is uh, start mining for clients on Facebook groups. You know, you, you may be part of, you probably got a Facebook account or your friend or family does, and they may be in groups and you just say, you know, listen, I'm offering these web design, here you go. And because there is a interpersonal connection, even a light one, in fact, you're kind of, you're kind of in the same group or you're in the same Facebook groups or you, you know somebody and know somebody, that increases your chances of landing jobs by quite a bit. So basic networking, uh, who you know is more important than what you know to a certain extent. Uh, so yeah, you gotta get on top of that soon after you get that first portfolio website up and running. 
So how do we monetize our coding skills, whether it be web development, uh, front end, back end, whether you do mobile app development, what have you? Well, there's a few different approaches. You can start freelancing. You can start a developmental, a development firm where basically you hire people under you. That's kind of the extension of freelance. Um, and three, you could create your own software based business. Like I have, for example, right now with studioweb.com where I have a, a learning application and classroom management system, and in fact, school management system that schools license from me. That is in terms of your own business. This is the three basic categories. And of course, there are getting, getting jobs. You can get a job. You get a job for a small company, get a job for a larger organization, or work for a startup. You can work in a pure tech company. Or you might be working for a company that uh, their, their main business could be like a big accounting firm and you're handling uh, some internal software that they have and so on. So it's not a tech company, but they still need developers and uh, tech people. So those are the options that you have uh, in that regard. So let me break down a few things. So number one, freelancing. Freelancing is the easiest type of business to get into. So I always recommend if your eventual goal is to be an entrepreneur of some type, start freelancing because freelancing will teach you a big part of the entrepreneur process if you the entrepreneurial process there you go so yeah start freelancing and uh, build up your portfolio clients learn to negotiate with them learn to uh, track your time to create workflows all these kind of things and a whole bunch more can you will learn with freelancing freelancing is the easiest business to get into because there's really no overhead especially development you just need a computer and internet connection and um it's the quickest to start up now a typical freelance business uh can take up to a year to establish itself some i've seen people do it in months some people take longer depends on the individual depends how good you are at speaking with people how much of a salesperson you are how many contacts you may have so if you don't have many contacts and you have to work on your sales skills it will take longer other people I've had come to my program, they were desperate to learn quickly because they already had three clients lined up. Meanwhile, I have other people who are good coders, but they have a hard time finding clients. So everybody's different, but that's okay. You just have to uh, plan according to your skills and your situation, and things will ramp up. One characteristic of freelancing is that it's erratic in the beginning, meaning you know, that first client's the hardest, just like that first job you get if you're going to become an employee is the hardest. And then um, over time, you know, you may get a client and you won't get another client for two, three months. And you get three clients in a, in a month and then you don't get a client for another four months. That's normal. But over time, you build a nice portfolio of clients. I recommend having 10 clients plus so you can rotate them. And then uh, freelancers in the beginning are making less than the typical employee coder. But once they establish the business, you're making a lot more typically, typically. There are exceptions. But uh, so that's what freelancing in a nutshell is all about. The next logical step above freelancing is starting a development firm where you're basically a, uh, a shop where companies will come to you. You may have one, two, 10, 20, 100 employees, 100 employees coders and designers under you and so you take on projects and then you organize the projects you you this is where you typically will leave being a developer a coder become more management more project management and so this inevitably comes to freelance freelancers who want to expand their business so they start hiring people so they can take on more clients more projects there's many ways to to configure that business but that's this in a nutshell. Now, the downside with set, setting up a development firm, a shop like that, is that because of the high cost of employing coders and professionals, uh, the margins are tight. What does that mean? That means, in a nutshell, what it boils down to, my calculations, you need about 10 people working for you full-time before your business will pay you the same money you would earn if you were just doing freelance projects on your own. So when you uh, get into, when you're considering starting a development firm, you have to decide whether or not you're going to like that lifestyle. Because when you are running a firm with people under you, your day-to-day -day task is very different than if you are a freelancer. 
So keep that in mind. And the third type of business is creating your own software-based business. Like I have, as I mentioned before, studio.com. You create a software, software as a service, SaaS, and you sell access to that software. You could even do, do one-shot payments, or you can do monthly fees, or license per user. That's what I do. And uh, that is potentially the most profitable business by far, by far. But it's also the slowest to start up because you got to come up with the software, you got to build it, you got to get your first clients. Usually it takes a lot more effort. Well, it always takes a lot more effort to get a software based business up and running versus freelancing or even getting into development, uh, starting a development firm. But it's also potentially by far and away the most profitable and it get, get huge. When you're freelancing, you're limited by your time. When you're doing a development firm, you're kind of limited by the talent. Uh, but when you create your own software, if you structure it properly, you're going to need people working for you, but it's going to be, uh, you're not billing for their hours. So there's a lot more growth potential there and a lot more potential for higher profitability in terms of licensing. So uh, there's pros and cons to everything. It's largely a personality choice in terms of... Uh, which type of business that you jump into, freelancing, development firm, or SaaS business. I leave that up to you. All right, so let's close off talking about the jobs. As I said, you can get a job, small company, uh, bigger established companies, and I would say maybe a startup. Why do I characterize these three types of businesses? Because they imply a different type of work environment. When you're working for a small company, typically as a de developer, you're going to wear many hats. You're going to have many different things you're going to probably have to do. So, you know, in the first few months, you may be hired as a Node.js uh, backend developer. But then, you know, one day your boss will come in and say, yeah, we got to build this thing. Uh, you got to go do, do some React now. Or another day, they may come in, you know, we got we got this old app that's done with PHP and uh, we need to update certain things. So go learn PHP and take care of that. That's the nature of working for a small business. A lot of flexibility, a lot of freedom, a lot of opportunity to learn all kinds of different technologies, jump from project to project. Usually small companies will be working on smaller projects where um, you may work at two, three months, five months on a project, and you move on to the next one, it would be two, three weeks. Whereas when you're working for a very large corporation, you might be on a, one project for years, right? And you won't be jumping technologies typically so quickly. But on the flip side, when you work for a large corporation, you'll be learning the corporate structure and that hierarchy. It's a different game. Startups, that's very chaotic, money coming in from uh, investors. So there's a lot of pressure on them to get product out quick. It's usually fast paced, a lot of potential there because if you could be one of the lucky ones, and it's luck, where you, you join the next Twitter, the next Microsoft, the next Facebook, the next Apple, et cetera, and you're one of the early employees in that, then you can get equity into the business, some stocks, options, and then you can profit from that. A very light overview of these uh, different job opportunities. A lot, one last point I made earlier, when you go work for somebody as a coder, as a developer, you may be working for a pure uh, development-based business. It could be a freelance, it could be a, de a development firm, it could be a company that has a SaaS software, or you might be working for, um, you know, might work for a plumbing distributor once needs software built for their backend system. So you they're not technically a technology company, but they need coders to work on their systems. So those are the different types of jobs. Now, whether you go for your own business, freelancing, development firm, or create your own SaaS, or whether you get a job, small, you know, small, big, startup, uh, et cetera, it's a, it's a personal choice, personal choice. So there you go. That is the roadway to software development. In terms of the job opportunities, in terms of the career opportunities. Okay, so let me close off with this. Typically, anybody working in software is going to make 50%, if not double, triple the average salary in their part of the world. Salaries vary, right? If you're in Eastern Europe, this is what you're going to make. If you're in Germany, you're going to make more probably. If you're in San Francisco, you're going to make a lot more. But of course, the cost of living is far lower, I would imagine, in uh, Prague versus uh, San Francisco. So you have to always look at salaries relative to 
the cost of living in your part of the world. So keep that in mind. But that being said, typically developers make significantly more than many other professions. And the training is not nearly as difficult as it would be, let's say, if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer or something, right? You can get your entry-level job within a year, and you can start making the big coder money, uh, you know, two, three years into the game. You see, if you look at the salary progressive progression charts in terms of software developers, you see the first year they're here, they're still higher than most jobs. Then the second year, third year, fourth year, and then it typically flattens out, meaning the rate of change is not so drastic. The first three years, you see the big drastic changes in your salaries. Why do I mention this? Because uh, coding is the path I recommend. It's the best path I know of anyway, where you can go from being working paycheck to paycheck, maybe being financially not in the best position, where you take all that extra money as a developer when you become a coder and you start, uh, you pay off all your debts and then you start investing wisely. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be complex and actually shouldn't be complex. And then within a few years, you'll be way ahead of the game, way ahead of the game. I did a video last year, it's called uh, 50 and Broke, Are You Too Old to Code? And I argued that you're not even close to being too old to code. And I described, you can find it on this channel, where I, I go into detail about how uh, with coding and proper financial, personal financial structure set up, within a few years, you can catch up to everybody in terms of retirement savings. That's a sad thing. A lot of people, they're in their 40s and 50s and they haven't uh, been taught proper finance. So they're in, a, they're in a bad way in terms of retirement. But the great thing is you develop those valuable skill sets, coding, etc., and then you, you start investing heavily and you start saving aggressively. Within like three years or so, you can catch up, maybe five years depending. You could catch up to where you should have been if you started saving when you were 20. If you're watching this and you're quite young, 19, 20, 25, you should get into the habit of saving and investing, the habit of saving. It's all about habits, all about habits. So whether you're making a thousand bucks a month or $50,000 a month, you're still saving uh, in a relative way. It's all about percentages. Anyway, that's another story. All right, I hope you found this video useful. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I run a mentoring program at UncleSteph.com, but I also have uh, self-paced courses. Links below. Check them out. Lots of uh, good info in there. Thank you.